Number 31. What is or are the x-intercepts of y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x? Is it A, 0, B, negative 2, C, 0, negative 3, 1, or D, 0, negative 1, 3? To solve for the x-intercepts of your function, we actually let y equal 0. So with this, if y is 0, so you have 0 equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. From here, we could see that uh, each term has x. So x is a GCF here. So factoring out x, we have 0 equals x times the quantity x squared plus 2x minus 3. If you could also see this quadratic trinomial here, it's also factorable. Hence, the rest were copy, but this quadratic trinomial was factored further as x plus 3 times x minus 1. And you could see the product of these three factors is equal to 0. And by the zero property of multiplication, each any of these factors is 0. So equating each of them to 0, we get x equals 0 x plus 3 equals 0, we get x equals negative 3. x minus 1 equals 0, we get x equals 1. Letter C. 32. In rhombus M and OP, the measures of M and P, of angle N and angle P, are 5x minus 18 and 3x plus 30 degrees, respectively. What is the measure of angle O in degrees? Did you go for 24, 478, 402, or 125? If you could see here from the given, MNOP, if you are going to write or draw your, uh, your uh, rhombus, you could actually see that N and P will be opposite angles. And we have to remember that opposite angles... And we have to remember that opposite angles of a rhombus or of any parallelogram are in fact equal. That is why angle N is equal to angle P and we have 5x minus 18 equals 3x plus 30. Subtracting both sides by 3x and adding both sides by 18, we have 2x equals 48. Dividing both sides by 2 gives us x as 24. From here, we could see that we could substitute 24 either to uh, the x of angle N or angle P. Either way, they will give you the same answer. I chose angle P. So angle P is 3 times 24, this one, plus 30 which is 102 degrees. However, we have to know that we are looking for the value of angle O. And, and angle P and angle O in the actual rhombus are in fact consecutive if you will draw them. And if they are consecutive, then they are supplementary. Meaning to say, they will add up to 180. Hence, to get the measure of angle O, all you have to do is subtract 102 degrees from 180 degrees, and that is 78 degrees, letter B. Okay, 33. Which of the following is the model for consistency for four-line geometry? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? Take a look. Which of these do you think is the model of consistency for four-line geometry? So four-line geometry is in modern geometry. And the answer here is letter C. Letter of B option, this one, is what you call the four-point geometry, the line model of consistency for four-point geometry. If you have four points and you will draw 
all the lines possible, you could see that there are six lines. Here we have four lines. We have one, two, three, and four. And in four line geometry, there are six points. Okay, 34. In Euclidean and non-Euclidean surfaces, the shortest path is called A, distance, geodesic path, straight lines, or curvilinear distance. The correct answer here is it's not distance, but we call it a geodesic line or a geodesic path. The shortest line between two points on a mathematically defined surface as a straight line on a plane or an arc of a great circle on a sphere, for example, is in fact a geodesic line or a geodesic path. Letter B. I hope you got it. 35. Lines on the model of elliptic geometry are, is it meridians, latitudes, longitudes, or great circles? So elliptic geometry, this is in your modern geometry still. And in elliptic geometry, one of the models of that is your sphere. And in spherical geometry, the equivalent of a line is called a great circle. So in the Euclidean plane, uh, when we speak about Euclidean plane, it's a flat surface. Two points, as we know, determine a line. But if you have a curved surface like this in a, on a sphere, if you connect two points using a line, for example, here's the one point, you connect them, you draw a line all throughout, you will actually go back to where you started. That's why lines in elliptic geometry are great circles. This, in fact, will form a circle. Letter D. 36. In hyperbolic geometry, the sum of the measures of the angles of any quadrilateral is, is it less than 360, equal, greater than, or greater than or equal to 360? Hyperbolic. If you answered B, C or D, I'm sorry, it is incorrect. The correct answer here is letter A. In hyper, okay, so in this case, for example, if you have here your Sakiri quadrilateral, I believe this is a Sakiri quadrilateral, it has three right angles. And because of the negative, we have a negative curvature here in your hyperbolic geometry. And so the remaining angle is in fact less than a right angle. So if this is less than a right angle, so meaning to say the measure of angle D here is less than 90. And if you add 90, 90, 90, and an angle that's less than 90, I'm sure you will get an angle that's less than 360 degrees. Letter A. Okay, 37. What is the derivative of y equals the cube of the quantity 2x minus 5? Is it A, B, C, or D? For this one, by the chain rule, what we will do is if you have your y prime, you will multiply the exponent here, 3, it will times 1 here, 3 times 1, you have 3. Then you copy this base, so 2x minus 5. Then subtract the exponent by 1, right? So it becomes 2. And multiply it with the derivative of the, in, of the term or of the polynomial inside this parenthesis. So the, the derivative of 2x minus 5 is 2. The derivative, because if you, two, the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative of negative 5 is 0 because the derivative of any constant is 0. So you have this. 
y prime equals 3 times 2 x minus 5 quantity squared times 2. However, we could still multiply the 3 and the 2. And you get y prime equals 6 times the quantity, the square of 2x minus 5, letter C. 38. Find the slope of f of x equals 5x plus 1 times the quantity 2x minus 4 at the point 1, negative 12. Is it 2, 3, 4, or 5? We have to remember that if you have the slope of any curve, you need to compute its first derivative. So, uh, because the slope is, uh, is the same as the first derivative, and I have here a product of two polynomials. If you wish, you could multiply them, simplify them, then get the derivative. Or in my case, I will be using the power rule or I mean the product rule of derivatives. So for the product rule, we have here f prime of x equals the first function or the multiplied by the derivative of the second. So we have 5x plus 1 times the derivative of 2x minus 4, which is 2, and add it with the second function multiplied with the derivative of the first. The derivative of the first function is 5. And this is now your slope at any point. If you wish, you may simplify this one. In my case, I will no longer simplify it. Because anyway, I will be looking for the value of slope at 1, at one negative 12. You could see we have here x. So to find the slope, we need to substitute our x here, which is 1 the x coordinate here, which is 1, to this. So by substitution, you have f prime of 1 equals 5 times 1 plus 1 multiplied by 2 plus 2 times 1 minus 4 times 5. So we have 6 times 2 plus the product of negative 2 and 5, which is 12 minus 10 or 2. Hence, the slope of f of x equals 5x plus 1 times 2x minus 4 at the point 1, negative 12 is 2. That's the slope of your tangent line. Letter A. 39. Find the equation of the tangent line to f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1 at the point 2, negative 1. Is it A? B, C, or D? What is your guess? What do you think? For this one, we have to find the slope first. So for the slope, using the power rule, we have to get the first derivative of your function. So we have f prime of x equals 2x as the derivative of x squared, negative 3x has a derivative of negative 3. So this is your slope at any point of f of x. But since we need to find the slope at the point 2, negative 1, and this one involves x, so we will substitute x by 2. So f of 2 equals 2 times 2, or negative 3. And with that, we have the slope, which is 1. So the slope of this line at the point 2 negative of the slope of the tangent line is 1. However, we are looking for the equation of the line. So we have here the slope, and we have here a point. So what formula are you going to utilize? We are going to utilize the what we call the point slope form or y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. Remember, whatever the slope is, that also is the slope of your tangent line. So utilizing it now, we have y minus negative 1 equals the slope 1 times the quantity x minus 2. 
y minus negative 1 becomes y plus 1. And 1 multiplied by x minus 2 is still x minus 2. And subtracting both sides by 1, you get y equals x minus 3. Letter C. Number, I hope you got it. So this one, it's for your tangent line. For number 40, it's now asking of the normal line. So same given, it's just that it's asking for the normal line. And how do we do this? To do this, from item number 39, the slope of the tangent line at 2, negative 1 is found to be 1. And remember this, the slope of the normal line is negative 1. How come? Since the tangent line and the normal lines are perpendicular with each other, it follows then that their slopes are that the slope of a tangent line and a normal line are negative reciprocals of each other or that their product has to be negative 1 for this case. That's why the slope of the normal line is negative 1. So since you have a slope of negative 1, and it passes through the point 2, negative 1. And using still your point-slope form, so we have y minus negative 1 equals negative 1 times the quantity x minus 2. So with that, we have y plus 1 equals the product of negative 1 and x minus 2, which is negative x plus 2. Subtracting both sides by 1, you have y equals negative x plus 1, letter B. I hope you got it also.